so you want to listen to a pretty all right podcast about wrestling, do ya? Well, the natural lad, Jim Swag, has said time and time again that there's only one podcast that's the most decent and the most all right in the industry today. And that's who? It's the Game Rating Wrestling Podcast. Here we are. That's right. Back again with your favorite wrestling podcast, the Game Rage Wrestling Podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here with Adam. Yes, hello. And today we're going to be continuing our most excellent, most decent, and most all right is coverage. When you talk about podcasts and the best of them, we're right in the middle of the pack. Absolutely. The most decent. I mean, the most all right. We are in the meat of the curve. Oh, yeah. We're, we're the literal meat and potatoes of wrestling podcasts. Which makes us pretty all right and pretty fucking decent. <laughs> pretty fucking decent. But anyways, we're going to be continuing our excellent middle of the road coverage of who killed WCW for the final part. But before we get into that, <coughs> if you're new here and you want to hear us listen to others or talk about other things that are pretty all right and most decent, then you can go to GameRageMagazine.com where you can, you know, listen to our full menu of of content that we have there available, which is a lot. There's there's a lot. There's like, I think we're up to like 17 different podcasts now. So of, 17 of, of varying different subjects, varying different subjects. That is a redundancy. Yeah, I didn't say I was smart. Yeah, I think we might have to do a BFN if you want to check into that, because I want to talk about if it's possible to learn what the (laughs) world's greatest minds are doing. If we were if Mm. we're just average Mm. human beings, if we were put in the same circumstances for to to learn in like a school environment, could could we learn to be geniuses? All right, we're definitely doing a BFN then. That's 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 happening. All right. Anyways, okay, but so anyways. That, that's that's aside from the point. Yeah. Jesus killed WCW. Yeah, that's right. We do know who killed it. And Jesus it was Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Jesus H. Christ killed WCW. Yeah, it all happened. I mean, it was all culminating to the moment that Vince McMahon faced God in uh, that WrestleMania. At WrestleMania. Well, when he fought Shawn Michaels, I mean, when him and Shane fought Shawn Michaels and God in, in a tag team match. That might have been one of the fucking most epic storylines that they've ever done <laughs> yeah like he they literally fought Shawn michaels and god <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, oh man okay are we, are we allowed to just talk okay so this is the wrestling podcast yeah, this right is the wrestling podcast so all right man i kind of want to turn this into a half segment okay all right or in in conjunction to just the recap and review of the final part of who killed wcw I was kind of hoping we could talk about some of the weird shit that happens in wrestling, like the things you really can't suspend your disbelief for because it's just absurdly stupid. Yeah. If you want to if you want to go down that road. Oh, yeah, let's go. Like Undertaker fighting with magic, like shooting electricity in the air. Yeah. I mean, that was cool to watch, though, as a kid. I mean, uh, also. Anything to do with the hell in a cell also is like, man, I mean, it's dangerous, but why would two guys agree to fight in that fucking thing and potentially die? Yeah, I mean, because that's basically what you're doing. You're just saying like, yeah, we're going to die. And also, dude, when it comes to when it comes to winning any type of championship that's in the main event itself, whether that's like the World Heavyweight Championship or even the undisputed title or the WWE title. I always love it when like the stakes are so high that it really doesn't have any effect on what happens in regular life, but they make you believe it. It's like, Mm, we can change the whole industry. We can change this whole company. If we win the fucking titles, like, that is beyond stupid. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is because, because they always say like, oh, if we control the world, the, the number one title, if we're the champion, then that means we 
get to run the place. Like, but that's not, that's it's not, not how really it works. true. And really, if you were just the champion, like if you look at any other sport, if you're a champion, you don't really have any more stroke than anybody else. No. To to make rules or to like, you know, no like, okay. When the Patriots went on their fucking uh, massive run, right, with with winning championships, it's not like they were also uh, saying, "Hey, you know what? If you guys want a shot at us, then you 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 got to all fight in a ladder match to fucking <laughs> to go out to, to fucking get a shot just to see us to come fight us for the Super Bowl championship." I mean, the only verifiable verifiable case is that Hulk Hogan, when he was in WCW, was the one exemption that says. It's not going to work for me, brother. Well, that's true, but that's because he had that in his contract. So that's the difference. That's like, that's the exception, not the rule. Yeah. But but generally. No, it doesn't work out that way. Yeah, it doesn't. And then also another thing too, like the whole workplace violence thing that, and and like sexual harassment. Sexual harassment (laughs) is like heavily prevalent. Heavily. Heavily prevalent. Vehicular manslaughter. (laughs) I can't tell you how many dudes I've seen actually killed on television while watching wrestling. Yeah. Or fucking, uh, Yeah, how many people have, I mean, it didn't actually happen, but Paul Bearer, when he was buried in cement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a good yeah, time. They buried, oh, buried alive matches. That's another one. Wait a minute. So you expect <laughs> me to believe that you are going to bury a dude, literally bury him in the ground, cover him with dirt. Mm. And then, oh, but he's back on TV in three weeks. Like, come on now. Okay. The one that really bothered me personally is that we're supposed to believe like these <coughs> these fucking meatheads mm-hmm. are capable of hijacking transmissions and putting themselves on a fucking Titan Tron. That's true. To, you're not that technologically savvy. Nobody, nobody's willing to believe unless, I mean, that's part of the suspension of disbelief is that wrestlers are like techno techno savvy <laughs> they're like technarchs they're fucking yeah. able to like they're tech they're, they're like techno technology lords yeah and i mean because think about this like the 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 one that comes to mind is is when stone cold had uh the championship belt and it was like i think the rock was actually the champion and he takes it and he throws it into the fucking river right yeah yeah so what what like why was a camera why was there a camera crew with him like how did he have like, how did those guys, did he, have to, did he have to kidnap those guys to come with him? Like, what? Or when Booker T and uh, Stone Cold, one of the greatest segments of all time, when they're fighting in the grocery store. Oh, yeah, that was fucking great. That was so awesome, but completely ridiculous, because then not only am I supposed to believe that, like, these guys, or, like, when because he, he starts off, like, chasing him around. Like, he goes to an old people home, and he's, like, Booker T's playing bingo, and then Stone Cold grabs the mic from the old lady, and he's like, B7, and then... Wait, wait a minute. I, I know that voice. And he looks up and it goes over and he's there and he just fucking runs after him. Like totally ridiculous. But I'm supposed to believe that that Booker T was hiding in a fucking old people home or a grocery store to, to, to get away from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm. And that there was a full full blown camera crew following them around to document this just because. Yeah. Or. The fact it's not specific to the judgment day, but like when a stable exists and they're kind of the top shit in the company Mm -hmm. that they have to set up, they have to set up the, uh, their lair essentially. Oh yeah, that's right. You were telling me about that the other day. Yeah. I don't know why that bothers me, but on a weekly basis, like we're supposed to believe, okay. Are we supposed to believe that they're at the same location or that they're moving about consistently because they do, they do, they do talk about like the fact that they do visit other cities, Mm -hmm. but we're supposed to believe like all the things that happen in the ring or is like one location, I suppose. Like it's a continuous thing thing, yeah. but also like the continuity of wrestling itself only happens within a stadium on a weekly basis. Yeah, that's it. It's only like, two or well, three hours or whatever the fuck the number is that they're on television. Like, that's it. Outside of that, nothing's happening. Yeah. Well, I guess now that barrier has been broken with social media because now it's... I guess that's true. You, you can talk about... You can still do kayfabe shit on the internet, I suppose. But but mostly, things happen on television or streaming apps or... Yeah. I don't know. That, that, just, that shit just... It's, it's interesting. <laughs> it is very interesting. I mean, do you have any other examples? I'm trying to think like what was a ridiculous. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> Obviously, uh, Vince, Mc- Vince McMahon blowing up in, in the fucking car. That was another one. Or, yeah. or Like, he gets into the car, just fucking <laughs> explodes. Or, um, also, like, people just getting run over mm-hmm. by the cars. And, I don't know, it's just, it's crazy. Like, also, like, in WCW, a good example is literally oh these like couple of dudes just rolled up and just took you mean they just took over the whole show yeah without security or nothing no, nobody nobody came up to stop them or to like do anything about it they were just allowed to run rough shot over the whole production essentially <laughs> yeah and also when the cops get involved too how nobody ends up behind bars yeah or- like i've seen stone cold get arrested on tv probably like 40 times and like, i've never they've never showed him actually he's never he's always comes right back not even the next week the same night he comes back it's like he escaped from jail it's like he's a he's a fucking a thief master or something like he's an escape artist yeah uh so i don't know what that kind of teaches kids that you you could get away with well, crime I mean, as a wrestler. It, ta- it taught me it taught me to hide handcuff keys on me at all different places. And anytime I've ever been arrested, I've always been able to get out of it and run off. And to this day, for the, still for, for, me. for all zero accounts of you being arrested, yeah. Yeah. every single time. Hey, but it's it's every, worked, it's worked a hundred percent of the time. I'm telling you that right now. That's true. So, uh, <coughs> trying to think of other examples, but. Uh, <coughs> I don't know what what else you got. You got anything else that you think about? Oh yeah, okay. So obviously when there's like some sort of a backstage segment going on, right? And then someone comes in to <laughs> interrupt or fight them or whatever, okay, right? Okay, yeah, that's another perfect it's one. It's like, wait yeah. a minute. What are the fucking odds that just at this exact time Oh, this dude. And you mean to tell me that you didn't fucking see this guy running at you fucking from 100 feet away down the hall because you're in this tiny little hallway? And he just shows up from behind the camera and just jumps you. Come on now. That's also another one. But, I mean, it's still cool. Like, I see that's the other thing. It's like a weird hypocrisy where you you know it's not real, but it's still like, oh, that was cool. Like, that was still cool, man. Yeah, I mean, the damage inflicted on wrestlers themselves that, like, taking punches and still be able to walk away from a match with no bruises or blood yeah, whatsoever. Yeah. Mo, mo, on most on most occasions like everybody ends up walking away with not a whole lot of damage on their body so these guys that are throwing full-blown punches yeah don't end up with anything after the fact uh shit man what else is there okay even even for like the technarch shit the supernatural element of taking over transmissions like Bray Wyatt. Oh yeah. Or the under- what the fuck? What, what is that, dude? Did he just did he just use his brain power to fucking like <laughs> fuck the screen up? Yeah. And then everybody in the, is like, "Whoa, what's going on? I, I don't understand. What's happening?" Like, yeah. Or or like when the NWO would do it, right? Like, oh, that was the other thing. When the NWO would do those things, when it'd be like. The following announcement is paid for by the New World Order. It's like they bought time on the show. Like you mean to tell me that these this this group that I'm being led to believe is a band of hooligans, mm. they legally paid for television time, and you guys said, "Hey, you know what? Yeah, we'll take that money, and we'll, we'll go ahead and let you guys have a little little thing on here." How about having a custody battle <laughs> with Eddie? Oh, what about weddings too? That's oh, another weddings, one, man. Dude, you know yeah. how many weddings they've had on? T- oh, and then like the one when. Uh, I think it was the Billy and Chuck one, and then Eric Bischoff was the guy doing it, and he peels off the fucking Mission Impossible mask. It yeah. turned out that he was it was him all along. Mark Henry uh, getting an old woman pregnant. Oh, oh, and then that old woman giving birth to a <laughs> jello covered hand. <laughs> like just the hand. It was and, and here's the thing. It wasn't like a baby hand. It was a fully grown hand. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but I guess if it was Mark Henry's child, it would make sense because that's a huge motherfucker. I mean, that's true. Also, like a 90 year old woman being able to get pregnant is probably impossible. OK. Mm, I don't, OK, but you could probably poke the holes in this one, but people coming to the rescue conveniently at the right time. Mm. Yeah, because what were you just ha- you just happened to be standing by. Yeah. To come run out like you weren't in the back doing other shit. You were just standing there waiting, like just standing there for no reason. That always you I don't know if you can be that stupid as a heel or a a, a face that if a, if a heel tells you, "Oh yeah, it's just going to be one-on-one or no interference or nothing." And then the first thing they do is come out with the full squad like oh. it, it happens all the fucking time. Why wouldn't you have a few buddies in wrestling like 
That's that is that is a true story. You know what's like pretty much impossible for me to suspend my disbelief is the fact that Cody Rhodes is the WWE champion. That is I cannot suspend. That is one that I'm not willing to suspend my disbelief for. Man, you 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 have it out for Cody Rhodes. Yeah, I do. I, I hope I get to talk to him one day and tell him to his face how terrible he really is. <laughs> and I hope that day comes sometime soon. Um <clears throat> also yeah, obviously, uh, getting to literally fight your boss in a in a fucking steel cage match, and then oh, here's the other here's the other kicker too. During that one, uh, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, nineteen ninety nine, when uh, Stone Cold is fighting Vince McMahon in a fucking the black steel cage, he during the middle of the match, the ring tears, and who comes up from the middle of the ring tearing the ring in half is is the Big Show. So what? I was just supposed to believe he was just hiding under the ring the whole night. Like, like was he? How did he get under there? Yeah. Well, why was he under there? Why was he waiting? Why didn't he just come out like from the crowd, like normal? I, I think at this point, <sighs> I'm starting to. Okay, maybe it's possible that there is a lot of people in the Anawai family, <laughs> but the number of people that have shown up for the bloodline at this point. I mean, I could be a I could be a bloodline member at this point. There's so many goddamn people. I'm like, are they really Samoan and part of the Anawai family? I mean, probably. I'll, I'll say this: they were. They, I saw an infographic about all of them currently now and how many kids they have. And they seventeen, all, they, they, twenty. Yeah, they have like twenty seven kids between just the guys who are there now. Oh my so god! Like, so that means the half next, the company is just going to be. The, yeah, the oh. next. Oh, and now that the Rock's in charge, the next generation of wrestlers, it's just going to be. It's going to be taken out whatever whatever wwe is in samoan that's what it's going to be called oh my god i i literally think i could be in the bloodline yeah i think i think we're all probably somehow related i think my two three and me said i was like 14 percent and hawaii family i'll be aloha sakoa or some shit i don't know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aloha, sakoa. <laughs> i'll be the nice one <laughs> yeah He's like, hey guys. Uh, I'll be simple. I'll be the simple this, Rick version. Yeah. Dude. Just be like, hey, uh, hey, can I get somebody a drink? Anybody need a towel? Uh, hey, uh, hey, that guy you just beat up. Uh, should we? Should we? Cl- clean should, his we should we call an al- Should we call yeah. an ambulance? Yeah. yeah. Should we get? Should we get some help for that guy? The the nice version of uh, the bloodline. Uh, all right. Well, what else do you got for that? Anything else do you want to get off on the abs- the absurdity and or stupidity of wrestling itself? I mean, there's a lot of all like, OK, if you're going to do a what's the word um, like the one where you go around the whole arena, uh, it's like a, you like know, when, when somebody falls count anywhere. OK. All right. So you expect me to believe that, like, you're going to go into the crowd and literally everyone's just going to behave and no one's going to try anything. Everyone's which is it happens. Everybody just. OK. But yeah, that, I got one right after. All right. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. That was, oh, okay. that was it. That was it on that. The the intelligence level of a referee. Oh, <laughs> to be duped by the not not to only- du- to, yeah to, to be duped by the heel, but also be knocked out and then conveniently wake up for the heel to win. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the it's the stupidity, the fragility, and then superhuman recovery. <laughs> yeah, that it's it. None of it makes sense when when you when you factor that in. True, because how. How does how does this referee somehow get okay? And then that's the other thing: a move that really wouldn't even hurt a wrestler, like when they when they slam him into the corner, right? That doesn't even really hurt a wrestler. It kills referees, like dead, kills them dead, and then kills them dead just long enough until until a pinning predicament has to happen. And then, man, Earl Hebner was the best at the slow. <laughs> Get up and the slow, and then that slow fucking count. That super. It takes them like five minutes to count to three, and sold it great. It looks cool. It looks good, but it's completely fucking ridiculous. I enjoy it. I mean, everybody enjoys it. That's that's what we love about wrestling. Is it is inherently ridiculous. Yeah. What did they say uh, on the thing? Uh, it's it's it is, it is some carny shit, man. It is. It is some fucking carny shit because it's it's basically the same story told a thousand times over with just a slight wrinkle or a slight change because the, the shit doesn't really change, right? When a, a face is healing 
or when a face is healing, when a face is facing a heel and they know, or rather the heel knows that he's going to need some way to get an upper hand pretty much in every situation, right? The face should theoretically know that, right. but it happens a thousand times over in every fucking incarnation ever. And no one learns. Yeah. That's nope. the thing. No one learns. And yet we're still surprised because <clears throat> yeah. it's just different people. Same shit. Same old shit. Same old shit. <laughs> it is. And we think something different. You know what, dude? Watching Being a wrestling fan is the definition of insanity. It is insanity. Because we are watching the same thing over and over expecting a different result. And it's it, we know it's not going to be different because there's only so many things you can do. Right. And the common, I don't know threads that exist in wrestling they just get repeated and rehashed over and over again I, i'm <clears throat> i'm waiting to see when the next legit version of the nwo is going to come out mm. and have a group come in and just fucking not like the bloodline or like evolution no nah, no i don't I want mean, any of that i don't want i'm any like that. i'm talking like they're gonna mess the fucking setup they're gonna take over the announce table they're gonna beat up announcers they're gonna be literal fucking bad guys i think it's coming you know why because you've read the descriptions of what's gonna be changing for when raw yeah, oh yeah. moves over to netflix yeah i mean at some point, we're going to get something like that. I think they're going to bring back the NWO. And what I think is going to happen is, is I think that they John Cena has the unfortunate pleasure, not pleasure, but responsibility of having that weird when they had that Firefly Funhouse Funhouse match. And he you got to see, oh, what if John Cena turned heel and he was he brought back the NWO, right? Yeah. I always thought that that would have been the best storyline John Cena could have legitimately ever done, but they would never really do it because he's the make a wish guy and you can't have him be heel and there's too much money to be lost. If he, was, he does that, right? He was kind of heel slash face with, uh, when he faced the rock a little bit, but that was just because he's going up against the rock. I think like that's yeah. In order to make it, but it wasn't compl- like a full heel. He's doing super heel shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, shit. Now they ha- might have the opportunity because now if they're going to be TV MA possibly. Yes. Or, and that's or, what, what I think is going to happen is I think that that Cody Rhodes is going to need to do a heel turn and they're going to have him and like someone else. I don't know who maybe Seth Rollins. They're going to be like, we're fucking, we're tired of this bullshit. Now we can be ourselves. We're going to fuck shit up. And they start doing it. And then they're going to, there's going to be a third man. And then fucking, it's going to be the Hogan moment. And it's going to be John Cena coming out. And that's going to be the, everybody's going to think he's going to come save the WWE guys from these dudes. And it's going to be John Cena that turns and fucking is the Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. He's the Hollywood John Cena. Dude, imagine if we can get the Dr. Thugonomics back. Oh, God, I, as, that would be so fucking cool. Like, man. that's how he turns heel is that he goes back to that oh. that gimmick. No, no fake jerseys because there was a point where they weren't able to have him yeah. with proper sports teams like he was just getting like nondescriptor shit at one he point he would just have a purple jersey with the number eight on it right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it'd be like you know they're out in minnesota and it's purple so you you imagine yeah. it's like a vikings jersey but shit well anyways uh i yeah okay for for that scenario for cody rhodes turning heel i think it's already happening because we kind of got a little taste of it with uh yeah, AJ Styles wincing or, or holding up his hands in the I Quit match because uh, Cody was ready to bash his brains in with. I don't know why it was that specific item because there was a plethora of other things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't really know why that was the one that threw me a little bit for a loop. <laughs> yeah, unless AJ Styles has PTSD from stairs and taking shots. I mean, of st- I mean, st- if anybody should have uh, PTSD from stairs, it should be fucking. Uh, what's his name? Uh, fucking John Cena, because Brock Lesnar fucking beat the fuck out of him with those stairs. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, I think there is something going on, and maybe it's just a breadcrumb. But the fact that his mother has been involved pretty much since the beginning, or just before the beginning of his reign, when The mm-hmm. Rock kind of got involved with uh the bloodline and shit. Yeah. That. 
I mean, because they'll cut to his mom like pretty frequently. She's like shouting obscenities and sh- shit or whatever the fuck she's saying. So my theory, my personal theory is that his mom is going to become like a nor it's going to be kind of something like a Norman Bates type of scenario where he <laughs> the his mother is basically the voice in his head. And that's how the th- things will start. Possibly. I mean, yeah, but uh, as far as like the as far as like the overall scope of what would happen with a TVMA version of Rob on Netflix, what else do you have in mind? Booba. I think Booba is in the, on the table again. Mm-hmm. Def- it's on the table. 100%. I, feel, I feel like Maxine Dupree was <laughs> she was wearing pretty. <laughs> Pretty much nothing. Uh, yeah, pretty much nothing. And her booba was nearly hanging out. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Usually the garments are more, you know, they cover all mostly. Yeah. And now, now that doesn't be, seem to be the case. Possibly, like, I think we might get more risque shit, possibly. And the fact that the audience is switching possibly from, you know, children to teenager slash adult i wonder if they're do you think there's being there's more money to be made from that group because for a while it was children right because there was money to be made off of them because how can a parent say no to their children so yeah it kind of makes sense a little bit and they wanted to be advertiser friendly so they did the whole p pg shit or their rated g shit now they're they're not a they're not concerned with being explicit or possibly having women be more revealing or whatever. But do you think there's more money to be made in this format? Yeah. All right. Think about this. Okay. So when the PG era, I don't know what the years technically started was like somewhere around 2009, 10, maybe ish. I don't uh, know. Like, I don't know. Um, well, let, me, let me just see real quick. Cause I, cause I, I have a theory. All right. Uh, well, the fact that they're advertising alcohol should be a tip, oh, yeah. a tip in favor that, that's of that. That's over. PG era start. Okay, so the PG era started. Yeah, okay. Two thousand eight is when the PG era started. It was in two thousand eight. Okay, so if we look now, two thousand eight was what seventeen years ago, ish. So, well, sixteen years ago. So now, if you had kids that were like between five and ten, those kids are now. 15 years later, like 20 and 20, 20, between 20 and 25. Right. So in the nineties, the same exact thing happened. There are eighties. Those kids that watched wrestling in the eighties, when it was the super gimmick era, right? The the golden era, the golden era of wrestling. And then in the late nineties, it was 15, 15 to 20 years later for some of those kids. And what did they do? They went to they went after those kids because there was a lot of them. They got them as kids, and then there was a huge influx of people who were adults watching this. So, uh, as we've talked about with wrestling, it's everything is it's cyclical, and so now we had to suffer through the cycle of another PG era. It just so happened that during that PG era, we we were kids essentially when the mature shit was going down from like 90, the, that 10 year period from like 96 to well 12 years, I guess from like 96 to like, Oh eight, that was when the mature shit started happening. Right. And <clears throat> we were kids during that 12 year period. So that, that shit ended when we were like in our early twenties. Right. So we had to suffer through the last 15 years to get us to our, you know, mid thirties now because they were pandering to those kids to build that audience. And now again, here, another 15 years later, they're like, Oh cool. Now they're adults. What perfect timing to when we're starting to lose. So we've made all of our money being PG. Now we're starting to lose audience because the people those, the kids are aging out of wrestling now. Like they're going to, where are they going? They're going to AEW. They're going to fucking TNA because they're not being kid friendly and they haven't been basically this whole time during the PG era. That's the only reason those, those companies have been able to exist. Ring of Honor, 
TNA, that's the only reason they've been able to exist is because there was no other adult oriented alternative to professional wrestling. WWE had the market locked up for kids and like the mainstream stuff. But if you were a fan that had grown up during that time and you wanted something that was more towards your age group and not for kid shit, you had to watch TNA. You had to watch ring of honor. You had to watch new Japan. You had to watch, you know, other, other wrestling. And there wasn't a lot available. So now that those times are over and the WWE is like, Hey, we've noticed that we've been losing audience in terms of like people are aging out. There's not enough kids. And that's the other thing too. It's demographics. The kids, the, the millennials or whatever you want to call us. So the, the, now that we are, we are, we, our parents had two, three, four, five kids, right? We've had zero to one, maybe two for some people max. So their audience is shrinking because Kids are aging out and they're not having kids to introduce wrestling to. So then they're like, fuck, okay. TNA, AEW, that's the only reason AEW exists right now is because the adult wrestling fans that watched it as kids, the PG era, they needed something for them. That's, once WWE goes to Netflix and does this whole TVMA or whatever, AEW is dead. Dead in the water. It's TNA, well, TNA will eventually, I think, be absorbed by WWE because that seems to be what's, that's why they're setting it up right now. Pieces of shit, man. No, no offense to WWE, but yeah, they, they're not really much innovators for anything, but they were the ones that did the things that were innovated the best. Yeah. They really take no risk and they make you take the risk. And then once they see it works, they take exactly what you did. And give credit where the devil is due, man. They take what you did and do it 10 times better. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, man, I know this is food related, but the thing I've been seeing a lot lately, lately, or I guess there's two examples, hot Cheetos being put, hot Cheeto dust being put on everything, oh, yeah. or like birria ramen. Oh, man. That was something that was sold in local Mexican ice cream shops or weird shit yeah, yeah weird weird like food related shops but that was something that started there and now they have it at del taco or some other chains and shit but the the people at the top are already two or three years behind when the thing was hot like yeah when it already happened wwe is almost like nearly the exact same thing where they'll look at other promotion like the fact that AEW. He's doing like forbidden door scenarios where they cross promote with wrestlers from their roster with NJ, NJPW or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, WWE didn't do that. They didn't do the media scrums. That was AEW's thing. The post, mm-hmm. the post game conferences. Like they, that was something that AEW did first. And then WWE is like, you know what? We should do that. That's, I think it's something that's worth doing. And it has yeah. given us golden moments, both, like, both in AEW and WWE. Yeah, I'll say this. Vince McMahon and the, the WWF proper, they innovated one thing. Or I should maybe, say, maybe should say two things. They innovated by having a super event of WrestleMania and they, when no one else was doing that. And then they innovated by buying every territory and essentially get, creating a national territory as opposed to a territory territory, right? Those are the things that Vince McMahon did that no one else did. That was the innovation. After that, cruise control. He literally waited. WCW started the NWO angle in 1996. The Attitude Era for WWF didn't really start until like 97, maybe even really 98 as it was full swing. But 97 was kind of when it began. So, again, they were behind the eight ball. They didn't. They didn't take the risk they let wcw take the risk and shit they didn't even try to do anything until they started getting their ass kicked and then they were like oh shit maybe we need to we need to try to catch up and i suppose you could throw ecw's hat yeah oh yeah is in in the in the fold as well that's a uh, ecw much better than aew right but they were like the equivalent of aew back then because it was the kids that grew up in the in the eighties that didn't have any adult wrestling content in the mid nineties. And that's how ECW was able to fucking have this just like insane hardcore fandom of people that 
like they loved it. I mean, I loved it. It it, it inspired this uh, rabid fucking loyalty. And it was because they were giving us something that, well, not me at the time, but giving people that thing that was age appropriate that no one else wanted to give them. And shit, it worked. So... Yeah, I'm excited for this. Pe- I'm excited for this period. This wrestling. We, I was talking to a buddy of mine last night. Wrestling's going to be good again. It is. I think it is. Like, yeah. it's not going to just be good. It's going to be great. It's going to be what we loved. I, I can't wait. Not that I'm a Seth Rollins mark, but I just can't wait until he can just call himself Seth fucking Rollins, like Rollins or whatever. What this Seth freaking Rollins is is the stupidest shit ever. It's so dumb. You might as well have not even done it. We've heard him say like explicit words before too so him falling just short of saying fuck yeah it's like it's why like, why 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 would he stop there yeah so what i hope he opens the show on monday night raw the first netflix and you know we should do a live like we should do a live broadcast of it like a live commentary that, broadcast that, when it happens yeah it's true well okay yeah i'm just saying i think i think we should plan for that like we do for the, the you know the ple's or whatever yeah the only thing that's kind of difficult is listening to the audio itself of what's being said on the commentary well yeah we have to uh well yeah of course we, have but we also have to listen to what what you're saying as well because we're gonna be talking right over yeah. these voices right, so yeah, we're yeah. not we're not gonna get everything no that's true so the only things i think we would probably want to pay attention to are promos the commentary maybe not so much but who, who knows yeah who knows I mean, but yeah, the promos for sure we want to hear. Yeah. And then obviously we need to see what the, I'm curious to see what the fuck it's going to be. A, 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 it's going to be like a pay-per-view. I feel like the first episode. Oh, definitely. I, I think uh, I mean, shit, dude, some of the rumors have been that uh, maybe the infusion of money means that because they downsized the whole fucking entrance stage. And now I'm hearing that it's going to be the opposite case now. Yeah, they're going to they're going to go crazy with it they're gonna do what it, they're gonna give us what we want they're gonna give us the the bombastic sets again they're gonna fuck man that 2002 to 2003 monday night raw with the fucking metal the shit everywhere and iron and the steel and, and the big ass jumbotron man that was fucking cool as shit the the fucking i mean listen, even the original raw with the raw like that was cool too or or the the first incarnations of the SmackDown entrance stage oh, with yeah. like the with rings the, and yeah, shit. The rings and the, or like when they had, they it had with the, the hand. Fist. Oh man, that was cool as shit. And that's I I want to see that again. And I'm tired. I'm tired of the flat fucking entrance. I want a ramp. I want a I, proper fucking elevated stage and a ramp. That's what we need. Yeah, I'm missing that. I think for somebody that's at floor level, I think a ramp helps quite a bit because you could see that from pretty much any angle yeah because once they get to the floor level you can't see no. over anybody and if they start at the floor level like that's one thing that i don't think we get a lot of anymore and it's because of that is the entryway promos like the ones where they're on the ramp oh, at true. the top of the ramp and then there's a guy in the ring we don't get those really anymore because you can't do them it's it's not aesthetically pleasing true and because chris jericho used to well even like the rock or pretty much you know everybody would walk up and down both oh, yeah. like both sides of the ramp itself. Yeah. So I don't know. It just added to the show itself in a very minute way, but it's still appreciated nonetheless. Yeah. And then when a guy's in the ring and someone's on the ramp, they're almost at the same level, basically. True, so like yeah. they're on equal terms. Whereas if you're coming out, that's why I don't think they do it anymore. Because if you're going to come out on the flat ground and talk up to a guy in the ring, hmm. that's just, you're just a bitch. Like that. Like you just also the uh, I mean, it's already been said before a thousand times over, especially on this podcast is. Um, for the Titan Tron, or at least for what is available now, you really can't have those moments where you converse like with the big version of the right. wrestler yeah. and, and the person that's inside the ring. Cause those moments felt epic too. And there's been none of that shit basically. Yeah. And I think that whatever Vince's vision was for what the product needed to become was just some boomer shit. And I feel like, I feel like triple H knows what's up. And I think he's like, hey, we need to go back to the shit that used to be the, fucking the cool, shit that man. worked because this stuff doesn't work anymore. And now that they're going on Netflix and it seems like uh, TKO or whatever is just kind of like cool with Triple H. Just, hey, man, or the board's just like and it, I guess it does. It helps that The Rock is on the board because you have a guy who was there who does. Listen, I know I talk shit about The Rock when we when he butts in on the WCW thing, but but, but The Rock knows the business. That's. 
that's what he knows and he knows what works and he knows what doesn't. And I think with him helping convince everyone like, Hey, whereas before the board who doesn't understand wrestling likely when he's just business people would have been like, no triple H, you need to just do what works and makes us the most money. And the rock's like, no, you don't understand. This is what's going to make us the most money. Yeah. I mean, it's like putting yourself in the exact same situation with WCW. Yep. Now that there's a, 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 a supervising figure with TKO, but the same mistakes are not being made. I don't know if Triple H has free reign to do whatever the fuck he wants, but I think maybe TKO's board of supervisors is thinking if we're going to recover any money or if we're going to profit at all, which it seems like they have, or they're probably going to with the number of advertisements that are in the ring and just all the bullshit that they've been doing as far as that goes. I think it helps just to have Triple H or Paul Levesque be somebody that has free reigns to do whatever the fuck he wants to figure out what is going to be the thing that gets them the top dollar or that's going to make them the most money. Because I think that's one contrasting thing about from going going from Paul Levesque to Vince McMahon is that there was only one person in charge and everything was filtered through him. And therefore that would mean that there would be little to no change and everything stopped at this guy with maybe with triple H it is maybe consulted, but if you think it's, if you, (laughs) the triple H is, if you think it's what's best for business, then fucking do it. If it's going to make us a lot of money, fucking do it. I, I hope that's actually what the case is, but yeah, me too. I really, I really hope that's, that's what's up. And I'm excited for this new, the the Netflix era, I guess, or going, I don't know what they're going to call it. The mature era, the Paul Levesque era, that needs to die. That's, that's dumb. But in the the TVMA (laughs) era or whatever it's going to be, fuck man, this is going to be some epic shit. And I I can't wait. I can't wait to see what it's going to (laughs) make AEW do. (laughs) Commit, commit some (laughs) puku. But they would have to have honor in the first place to do it. Oh, that's true. And they, do, they they do not. They do not. Uh, yeah. Uh, just going back to the Titan Tron shit, man. I'd like I w- I would love to see more of that happen because I think if there was one one thing to take away from previous years of things that created epic moments, it's one of those things. Um, I think all the new stuff that they had as far as like camera angles and, and having the cameraman follow like Jey Uso to, to make it feel like he's the people's yeah, yeah. the common man's fucking right. hero yeah. or even like Sami Zayn, that shit works too. Um, I wonder if we're going to be getting more. I mean, I feel like there's probably enough stables, but maybe I think I want to see what you're talking about. Like a Supreme enemy to everybody. Yeah. Like I, I really want that. I think, yeah. I think if that comes with all the vulgar language and violence that you can imagine. Like I want the new NWO, whatever that becomes. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think it's going to be fucking awesome. <sighs> Shit. I don't know if I have anything else to add. I, I think I had one thing, but it was specifically about uh, when it comes to continuity, why does all the bullshit happen on the foreign announce the foreign announce table? Well, it's because those guys don't get much say. And well, it's it obviously started with like Jr. and and the King. Yes, they were. I'm sure they were like, no, don't fuck up our table. We need it to read our shit and know the script. Like, yes, yes. We, who cares about those idiots over there? The the Spanish, <laughs> the French. Who gives a fuck about those assholes? They don't need a table. Yeah, I mean, they're that, lucky they're getting to sit next to us. That, I'm sure that was their fucking mentality. That, that shit's funny to me because it would change frequently on like pay per views because <laughs> now that they've opened it up to having having it in France and Germany and. Uh, other locations it's like we know these motherfuckers aren't going to come back like why even bother introducing them if we know they're just going to be here for one fucking day like yeah that's true that's true who cares (laughs) who gives a fuck i mean if anybody it's going to probably be the spanish announce table that probably gets to retain their job oh yeah but i I don't fucking know but that's just funny to me but it is and getting back to the future of wrestling um man i just can't wait to see the kind of promos. Well, fuck. I don't, I can't say I really remember what happened with, uh, CM Punk's promos in AEW, but I'm sure he's sal salivating at the mouth to find out what he can do 
as far as like promos go and with the potential that Paul Heyman is now going to be his right hand man oh, once yeah. more dude I I can't wait. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> uh, anyways. Fucking, anyways. That's it. What else you got? You got any other stuff? Any other things? Um, shit, I'm probably going to remember after the fact, but I think what we need to do is end the episode oh, here and then start the WCW one. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> we, we've already been going for 45 minutes, so I'm like, oh shit, I didn't realize this, but fuck it, this turned into a whole full-fledged episode. Cool. I'm, so, glad, I'm glad it wasn't just a 20-minute segment about... Yeah some of the stupidity of wrestling itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I might have to change the name of it. All right. So that's, that's what it'll <laughs> yeah, be. It'll yeah, be yeah. the stupidity of wrestling or the absurdity of wrestling the absurdity slash the future, slash the future of wrestling. Yeah. All right. So cool. Well, shit, I guess that means you'll have to tune in next time to hear us talk about, well, I mean, you can turn in immediately after this. Cause it's the next fucking episode, man. What a fucking swerve it is, man. They thought they were going to get, see, we're just doing like in wrestling, all right? We just swerved you guys into thinking you were going to get one thing, and bam, you got force-fed another. I swerve when I drive. I <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I swerve Strickland, man. Yeah, fuck yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you guys for listening to this episode. And, uh, you know, I will say to the, uh, to the to the fans on the internet who actually interact with us, keep keep doing it. Keep it up. Even when you're wrong, it's okay. It doesn't matter. You know, you guys can't be right all the time. It's hard. Listen, we know we're right all the time. So the Colonel Parker shit. (laughs) It was funny. That was a good. That guy is a good dude. I will say he admitted when he was wrong. Fucking. He he did say, oh, actually, he did piss me off a little bit because he said, (laughs) he said, oh, your video editing threw me off. And I was like, oh, blame the video editing. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) I, we were with the ones that produced the goddamn documentary, you fuck. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, so. <laughs> take it up with fucking yeah. Rock. Yeah. Take it up with the rock and vice. All right. They're the ones who fucked up that video editing. We just slapped it on our shit. Why can't uh, you just admit you're a fucking moron? Dude? Yeah, man. Listen, people know. And, you know, another thing I have noticed is that I, people are starting. Some of them are starting to actually go and listen to the whole episode to hear the whole thing in context. Because the clips, people aren't getting what we're saying from the clip, good, which is good. They, that's the whole point. Yeah, that's the whole point. I agree. But I'm, I'm just saying it's nice to see people finally go. Because there was one guy that also commented and said, oh, yeah, I remember exactly what you're talking about. And I was like, good fucking bastards. Everybody wants to say shit. And then uh, anyways, me and that guy who uh, he originally told us we were fucking assholes. Uh, now we're friends and he originally t- it, it, we became friends. We bonded through because I, I was I was fucking with him because I did say like, yeah, man, I'm a little confused about what you're saying. And then I said something and then I said, suck. And then and then I wrote uh, spin rooney commences. And then uh, he said, oh, yeah, my bad. I was wrong. And then he said something to the effect of like, you should have told him. You think you know me? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's, if it's, this was about Edge, yeah, but it wasn't. It was about fucking Booker T. So then I had said something else, and he had said the that thing about tell me they didn't just say that. And so I I quoted a line from uh, one of the one of the times well, one of my favorite interactions between Booker T and Goldust was when uh, Goldust is like God, he comes in, he's like God, that goddamn Michael Myers and. Booker T's like, what What are you talking about? And he's like, huh, he ripped me off. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, there's only one gold member and it's gold dust. And then so he's like, well, fine, two can play that game. And he's like, what are you talking about? And then he he, he brings out this little midget dressed up as, as me. And he's like, I have mini dust. And he's like, mm, I will name him mini dust. And then he's like, yes. And then, and then, and then Booker T's like, what is, go-? he's like, I can't believe what's happened. And then he looks down, he's like, man, get off me. And the little mini dust is humping fucking Booker <laughs> T's leg. <laughs> Classic. So. Anyways, if you've if you've never seen that, you should Google uh, Gold Dust uh, Mini Dust, and it's fucking hilarious. Anyways, all right, well, uh, fucking uh, go to GameRageMagazine.com if you want to hear all the rest of our uh, pretty all right podcasts, and if you want to hear you know us talk about other things, go to Game Rage Magazine at Game Rage Magazine on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Mag on Twitter slash X. You can uh, follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official for all of the latest musical musings, and uh, <laughs> I think. I think uh, All Gas No Trash is becoming the dirt sheet of music, the music industry. I don't give a fuck. And I think that's good. I think that's perfect. That's exactly what it needs to be. Find out all the dirt about music, all the fucking shit they don't want you to know about. Anyways, all right. uh, I guess that's the end of this episode. So uh, tune in next week, or not next week, but tune in for the next one, which will give you uh, what you actually thought you were going to get here with this episode.
that was another wonderful, amazing, powerful episode of the Game Rage Wrestling Podcast. And take it from me, ladies and gentlemen, the natural lad, Jet Swag. If there's one podcast, one show you should be listening to that you should be absolutely grateful for, it's the Game Rage Wrestling Podcast. And one of the things you can do to show your appreciation for all the hard work and dedication that these boys put out day in, day out, just for you people. It's that you can go and you can subscribe and you can like and follow them on the Instagram and the TikTok at Game Rage Magazine. You can also follow them and like them and subscribe to them on the old Twitter, which I don't know what it's called now, but who cares? It's at Game Rage Mag there. Additionally, if you feel the need to really show your appreciation, which you should, then go to their website at www.gameragemagazine.com and show us some love. Show them some love and show some love for the natural lad, Jet Swag.